All right, here we are at our 2003 Sea Ray 280 Sundancer for sale here on the beautiful fresh waters of Norris Lake, Tennessee. You'll probably notice something a little bit off today. It's not your screen brightness. This is our first night listing. And the only reason it's a night listing is because We've currently got a little bit of a backlog on new listings and we're trying to get them on the market as quick as we can. And um, we truly are working around the clock trying to get these uh, nice listings to you. We're gonna have the full details and the full specification list for, for this one at our website, which is www.yournewboat.com. That's where you'll find the current asking price. We won't mention those in the video tours because they'll sometimes change to a listing is old. This one right here, it does include a transferable slip here on Norris Lake if you want to keep it here. However, this lift is not included with the boat. A trailer is. There is a, uh, a trailer going with this one. Now, I do want to point out here on the swim platform, this might be my best look at it. I'll show it to you again right before I step um, onto the uh, extended swim platform. That We do have some sea deck. Um, basically a synthetic uh, vinyl teak surface on the swim platform. We've got three step swim boarding ladder and then that uh, that's actually a pedestal mount uh, if you wanted to have a grill or something like that. Another thing I want to point out to you here before I leave this position, we've got some underwater lights on this one. Uh, we've also got trim tabs and those are alpha out drives. This is powered by twin 4.3 liter Mercruisers, uh, multi-part fuel injected inboard outboard engines. Again, those are the alpha drives. I don't think I'll need that light the entire time. Uh, we've got some LED lighting in the cockpit, so it is lit up quite nicely. Um, I'll go ahead and shine a little bit longer for you. We do have a remote spotlight on this one. That passed function test. We've got a windless anchor. That basically means that does all the heavy lifting for you. All you do is either hold the button uh, with, a, with a foot controls right up here at the bow, um, or in the cockpit, um, just simply with your uh, finger or thumb. There is some bottom paint on this. Now this has been lift stored. If this is stored on a lift, uh, the bottom paint is not quite as critical. You've got a little bit left. Um, you could actually probably finish out this season in the water with this if you wanted to. But again, there's also a trailer with this one. So you're gonna have the option of storing this out of the water if you wanted to. Uh, bottom paint is needed if you're gonna leave a boat in the water. Um, you know, all the time. If you're on a lift, uh, again, it's not as critical. Or if you're on a trailer, it's not as critical. If you look at that T-Ray logo right here for our climb inside. This this one is really loaded with options. Um, I try not to miss anything. Sometimes I do, um, and it is it's not intentional. That's why we always direct you to the website uh, for the full list spec specifications. I get a little bit close to that underwater light here. Those are LEDs. And again, there's those. Uh, Mercruiser Alpha 1 out drives. We've got stainless props on there. Um, looks like three blades. Also got swim boarding ladder on this. That's a three step swim boarding ladder. All right, I made the transition up here. Again, just kind of want to show you that, that swim deck. That's one area um, where I don't quite have the lighting that we would typically have. We got a rear storage hat right here. That's where your shore power cable, that yellow cord. That's your 30 amp shore power cord that's going into that hatch uh, where it is connected into the boat. You've got a um, fresh water wash down spigot. You've also got a dockside water hook up there and that's, um, that's convenient so that you're not having to use your onboard water supply when you're here at the dock. Also, before I climb into the cockpit or move on forward to the cockpit, we've got a small little transom shower here, a handheld transom shower that is hot and cold, which is a convenient feature to have. And that's that last of that sea deck flooring. And then we're stepping right on into the bow area. We've got some cockpit carpeting. We've got a dual bimini top with the salon enclosures, the Isinglass enclosures. We've got, uh, like I, I think I mentioned it earlier, a lot of the lighting has been switched over to LED, if not all of it. Uh, the second bimini top is just in a storage boot and they're just using the bimini over top of your helm area but again you can have both of those tops up and then you can have them up with or without the uh, 
salon enclosures. This is a little convertible uh, lounge area here on the uh, the 280. This right here will, will slide out and you can kind of pull this seat all the way down. Show you what we're talking about here. So that'll make, it's basically your own uh, built-in um, filler cushion without having to actually get the, the uh, pedestal out. That's just a piece of dirt there. I don't want you to think that was a, a rip or a tear. So you can basically uh, make you a little sun lounge without having to uh, get pieces out for filler cushions and lower tables and uh, things like that. And that does go all the way through there. So you've got some longer legs. You've got plenty of plenty of leg room. Go ahead and get this little push back up. We've got an upgraded stereo system on here. We've got uh, four JL audio speakers here in the cockpit area. Um, two other speakers down in the cabin. We've got a JL audio subwoofer as well. And that is right behind your driver's seat. You can look at that right there. All those speakers pass function test. Got a little cockpit sink here, some integrated uh, cup holders. That's basically a um, self-draining cooler on that side, and this side would be your, your sink. Storage in here as well. A um, lot of storage on this one. And over here is going to be your battery switch. Got um, a couple batteries on this. Uh, generator battery, and then dual batteries for your engines. Now here's your uh, helm area. I also want to point out we've got a bolster driver's seat. And this is the bolster that is referred to when we say something's got a, a raised bolster or a flip up bolster. That's a bolster that gets flipped up and then that allows you to be able to see over your helm area whenever you're getting this boat up on plane. All right, a lot of toys here at the uh, helm area. And I've got everything lit up for you so you can see all the, uh, the arch lights cockpit lights and some courtesy lights. I've even got the navigation lights on so we can uh, light up this dash for you here. We've got a little uh, multi-function gauge right here. It's gonna have drive trim, battery voltmeter, uh, oil pressure, and engine water temperature. You're gonna have that on each side for either engine. Um, here's your tachometer, built-in hour meters, and then you got a speedometer here in between the two, compass just overhead. We've got a rudder, um, I'm sorry, not a rudder indicator gauge. This is a uh, engine synchronization gauge. When you're running with twin engines, your throttles are not always completely fine-tuned. If they're in the same position, one engine uh, could have a higher RPM than the other. So that's basically a shortcut gauge where it's just a real quick reference point where you can see if one engine is lagging uh, behind the other, and then you can give it a little bit more gas. And basically, you'd, uh, what you want to do is try to keep that needle in the middle there um, and that's just basically, again, a quick reference point so you're not having to go back and forth looking at the two tachometers while you're trying to pay attention to where all you're going on the lake and everything else. Fuel gauge right here as well. Uh, depth finder right here. That's not quite going to give me a proper reading because we're up out of the water right now. That is functional. Um, and then we've got a Ray Marine. Uh, this is a chart plotter. Uh, it's also got radar. And we've got a uh, sonar as well. So you can skim through here. And again, I'm not going to get a, uh, a readout on the fish finder because the boat is out of the water. Um, and that'll go into a radar display right there. Um, and you can do uh, you can do different split screens. You can have one that's got your, uh, um, your engine info. This is going to give you a GPS speed reading and things, things like that. I'll go back to the chart here. Now, we've also got a uh, driver stereo remote here at your helm station, tilt steering wheel. Um, oh, I should point out, we've even got some little, uh, little added, uh, basically, remote for that chart plotter. So your driver here can, can basically um, not have to take his hands off the wheel to, to uh, access that. That's a, that's a nice feature. Trim tap controls right here. Uh, driver stereo remote. This is those underwater lights I had on a moment ago. Lower. Uh, now, this hatch lift is... Li uh, You've, you've got, Sea Ray puts these same uh, gauges on, on all their models. This one's not equipped with the power to hatch. Just want to point that out. Uh, here on your engines, we've got, oh gosh, uh, I turned the key off on those. You've got 1,052 hours on one engine, I think 962 on the other. Uh, ballpark in that, I will have the exact hours at the website. Uh, this one's also equipped with a Kohler generator, it's a 5kW Kohler generator. I'll get to that whenever I raise the engine hatch here in a few moments. Uh, we've also got a Raymarine 
uh, VHF radio right here to him as well. That's just about going to do it for the cockpit. You can go overneath your, your cabin entryway to get up to the uh, windless anchor. You've got some fender holders up there as well, uh, windshield wiper. And go ahead and head on down into the cabin. Like I said, I've got it nice and lit up down here. I don't think you'll have a problem seeing. You can definitely tell this one's got some LED lighting upgrades. All right, so we've got a convertible little dinette table here. What that means when I say convertible is that table will lower and you've got filler cushions that will make that one sleeping area or berth. Some integrated storage overhead. And then directly across from there, we've got your small little galley. Uh, that's a integrated microwave. We've got a Norcold 12 volt or electric refrigerator. There's your sink. They basically they give you these little um, counter pieces so you've got more surface area to actually use this counter. And that's a smooth top electric range. That's a 19 inch um, LED HD television with built in uh, DVD player. Get a loss for words for a minute there. And this will actually slide right out. There's a little safety switch right here. See if I can. There we go. And this will slide out, and your uh, and your, and your screen will swivel. Actually, it needs to go out a little bit farther, a little bit more. Okay, now to do a full swivel. If you're up in the berth, um, you know maybe you're you're sitting over the dinette. So slide that back in place. There we go. Lots of storage on this one. Now here is your, um, basically this is your second convertible dinette really. Most people will leave this converted into a bed. But this, I should show you, those are the filler cushions there. And then that table can be raised up. They put uh, one of these little uh, drawer grips on there. And that will help keep those cushions from sliding out from under you whenever you are using that as a bed. Also got some speakers up here in the V-berth. Um, this is your two cabin speakers. You, you've got one there and then one right over here on the other side. We've got a small hang, hanging closet right here. Um, and then I also want to show you, we've got these privacy screens. This is your, uh, your hatch here, so you can raise that up. Slide this over for a screen. You get some air circulating through here whenever you're going down the lake. You can have it all the way open. And then that right there is basically your, your sunblock. A little bit of uh, stains in the carpeting on here. This does have some carpet runners right here, which is right here. These are simply snap-ins. Snap um, this is really common on just about every cruiser, especially because the fridge, um, you know, that's going to have some condensation coming out when that uh, power gets turned on or off. So that's very, very typical of uh, just about any cabin cruiser. Just want to point that out for you. We always try to, to do the full 360 degree tour as best as possible and try to show you any wear and tear that we have noticed uh, to possibly save you from making a trip or just uh, really just making sure that there's no surprises. Uh, when you're shop, boat shopping, most people prefer to not have any surprises. And that's kind of, that's been our philosophy. Uh, we've got a little um, integrated waste bin right there on your step leading up to your cockpit. Oh, uh, this is your control for your air condition. This has a cruise air, reverse cycle, heat and AC units, a marine air unit. Essentially, it's a geothermal unit. That's a 10,000 BTU capacity unit. And then here's a, a Clarion. This is an AM, FM, CD, Bluetooth, uh, satellite ready stereo. Again, we've got a, a driver stereo remote. Uh, four cockpit speakers, one subwoofer, and two down the cabin. So we got six total speakers. And then here's your basically your power panel. Top half is going to be your AC power, which is your shore power or your generator power. Bottom half is your 12 volt power or power or your battery power. We've got a remote generator start here. 
And then we've also, we've even got a little light in, in this area as well. So. Um, oh, we've also got this um, tank monitoring system. This will uh, tell you what your fresh water capacity is, your waste tank capacity. Um, that's not being used right now and your gray water is not used either. It also does battery bolts. Thought that was kind of handy. All right. Now this is what is known as your mid cabin on an express cruiser. And I also want to point out, we've got some memory foam padding underneath these cushions. So these cushions might look like they're sitting up a little bit higher. And that is because the, the owner's taken the steps to so basically double your padding by adding some memory foam down in there. I've uh, got some storage just behind your head area, um, well, the, you basically where your head would be in the bed, um, and these will pop open. I wanna show you inside this hatch because we've got a JL Audio amplifier here and a cell phone or cellular antenna booster installed. Everything else is just storage. And then I've, there's some other items stored back here in this mid cabin. A lot of that will not be included in this one. Um, the This cellar is, Staying in boating, they're moving up to larger models, so they'll be taking water toys and personal belongings and things like that with them. Also, should point out, we've got uh, a hatch here in this mid cabin with a screen. All right, here is our head compartment, and this is a vacuum flush head. This is an upgraded option, and this is a really nice option to have on a on a cabin cruiser. Once you've had a vacuum flush head, that's the only marine toilet you will want. That basically uh, uses a vacuum pump to create suction so that whenever you flush that, everything gets sucked right out and goes into your waste holding tank as opposed to a grinder or a manual toilet. Uh, now your shower on this one is basically this raises up, goes in this holder right here. And there's your shower and there's a drain in the floor. Um, it's also known as a shower sump pump, uh, which is right right down in there. And then that basically operates like a bilge pump and will pump out the shower water. Now I should say I'm not gonna quite get through everything um, on the first video today. So there will be a second video. There'll be actually about this time, you should see the link popping up for that second video. You can click over to that and rejoin us here in a